this is Ken Perry with this week's edition of Boots in the Field. Harvest is moving along in between the showers and, and uh, uh, yields are still staying strong. But some of the things that we're uh, seeing this week, we've been investigating a number of those fields we talked about earlier with the Goss's wilt. Probably got 40, 50 fields with Goss's wilt. Um, we were hoping that uh, it came in late enough that it wasn't doing a lot of damage to these crops, but we are finding some of these fields where it has been pretty significant, uh, 50 to 100 bushel off the pace uh, in the areas of the Gosses wilt itself. Now, the fields that are getting dinged the hardest definitely are those that showed up in the August aerial images. Um, they started to turn brown or showing the color and temperature differences already. That's one of the reasons why we talked about using those aerial pictures to get out and do the scouting so we didn't uh, come across any surprises. Probably had about a dozen surprises uh, this week as far as fields being too far off the pace for the farmer uh, to stomach. And when we look back at the aerial images, most of them were already showing it there in August itself. And remember uh, with Goss's wilt, we really need to know if it's Goss's wilt versus northern because there's not a lot we can do to manage this Goss's wilt especially in our corn on corn programs, other than crop rotation. So these fields that are, um, we're talking about fields that are swinging from 250 bushel to under 100 bushel when we hit the heavy gosses wilt areas. Uh, we got to take them out of corn and, and put them back into a soybean rotation, maybe even thinking about two years of soybeans on some of these fields. Uh, there is no um, complete resistance to gosses wilt when we're se selecting hybrids, and there is no a bacteria side that we can spray on. Remember, Goss is, is a bacteria. So basically, we got to get it out of corn. Uh, we got to bury the residue, get it to decompose. We got to get rid of all of the food source for that bacteria before we can uh, team this thing down a little bit. So crop rotation and, and tillage are going to be two that we're going to have to look at there itself. But again, it, it's um, hard to diagnose it now as this crop is done compared to what it would have been uh, this summer when we're out there. But some of these fields I thought were going to make it through there was more damage done uh, in those areas than, than expected. Definitely by hybrid. I've seen uh, a couple of days ago, we saw one hybrid getting dinged 15, 20 bushel, and one getting hit 100 bushel in the same field. So, again, things that we need to know for our crop uh, plans for next year. Getting a number of calls in about uh, cutting these beans and leaving ruts in the field and what we should do. And uh, I'm under the camp that I'm going to say keep going, guys. If, if you can get through it with the combine, let's get these beans harvested. Our days are going to get numbered, and it looks like we're going to have to get them a half a day at a time. Uh, I'll worry about the ruts after we get the beans harvested. From previous experience, I've seen as much as 25 to 50% yield loss if we let these beans go and they shatter out on the ground and we can't get this weather controlled. Again, after the 15th October in this region, we really uh, start to have to pick and choose what days we can cut the beans. So if you can get through them, um, my opinion is keep going. Um, we just finished up a, a large one of our leaf structure plots. We're looking at upright leaf, fixed and flex here. We're seeing a, a trend all the way across this plot that I'm also seeing across the rest of our fields. It looks like the upright leaf structure is uh, adding some serious bushels out here. So the pendulum leaf structures did pretty good in that 230, 240 range, but we're adding anywhere from 30 to 50 more bushel in some of these upright structures. So the same hybrids in this plot that burned up in 2012, it looks like they're going to have a banner year out here. So it's kind of interesting to watch that, and we'll go through that um, this winter when we go through the meetings. But it looks like leaf structure has a bigger hand on yield right now in this particular plot we're just finishing than actual population, meaning the upright structures took advantage of the sunlight they could capture as long with the adequate amount of moisture and stuff we have here. Again, we want to uh, remind you guys to call those fields in that you uh, are harvesting that need soil testing. So the crew is staying right behind the combines as of right now, and we can get that uh, results turned around for you so you can get your tillage done. And um, remember, we got to till these tracks. So when the moments uh, arrive that you're waiting for a dryer or whatever, and you guys can get your tillage teams rolling. Let's try to uh, keep the tillage as close to this harvest where we can, where it's dry enough. With that, everybody keep the hammer down and keep it safe, and we'll talk to you next week.